Welcome to Anvil Airsoft TV in association with Taiwan Gun. In this episode we're going to be looking at and range testing the AK-12 from Arcturus. This is a replica of the new Russian service rifle that is replacing the venerable AK-74. Keep watching to find out more about it and just how far it can shoot. Tai Wang Gun have sent me this Arcturus AK-12 to review for their channel. So let's have a look over what you get in the box. Of course, you get the replica itself. You get two magazines, one high cap, one mid cap. The mid cap can be switched down to 30 BBs, excellent for Milsim players. The rear sight, is supplied separate to the gun. I'll show you how to attach it in just a minute. A cleaning rod, the Allen keys you'll need for the gun, and a spare retaining clip. As Taiwan Gun downgraded this before it got to me, as I'm in the UK, I also got the original spring. I also got a manual, patch, and fridge magnet, which will come in useful in just a minute. The replica is made mostly from metal, like the real firearm. Let's see which parts are steel. Rear part of the muzzle brake, front sight and gas block, front trunnion, receiver, trigger guard, mag release, top cover, mock bolt carrier, fire selector, and some of the high wear areas of the stock assembly. The other metal parts are either aluminium or a zinc die casting. The plastic parts feel of good quality and should easily hold up to airsoft use. So let's have a look at the features of the Arcturus AK-12. Starting from the butt, the Arcturus has a collapsing and folding stock. You fold it using this button here. You then unfold it by pressing down on this latch here. You can either have the stock fully in or fully out, and there's two more positions for a total of four. It has a nice grippy rubber pad, which sits really nicely in the shoulder. The pad can be removed by pulling down on this latch here. On the real AK-12, this allows access to a storage compartment in which they keep some of their cleaning equipment. You could maybe put a spare battery in there. To replace it, just simply slide down, push the little nubbin in, and it clicks into place. And stock has these useful QD mounts left and right. Compared to a regular AK-74 or AK-47, the AK-12 is much more modular. This is most apparent with the railed top cover. It's also attached much more rigidly than on other models of AK. This long top rail allows you to mount all of the optics you might see fit. The rear iron sights slide on from the back and are secured using this grub screw here. You can use the Allen key that they supply in the set. On the AK-12 you get a rear peephole sight and I much prefer those to the normal AK notch and post. The grip is much bigger than on a conventional AK, and I prefer it. It's suitable for players with both large and small hands. On the real one, this button here releases a storage compartment containing more cleaning equipment and a bottle of oil. As this is an AEG, it's non-functional because the grip houses the motor. Moving on to the receiver, we find the conventional fire selector has been replaced by this one with a shelf. This allows it to be manipulated a lot easier with a finger, much more convenient, and allows the AK to be used in a more safe manner when on the playing field. It has four positions, safe, automatic, two round burst, though that's not functional on this model, it just shoots in fully automatic instead, and semi-automatic. Although the two round burst is just an aesthetic feature on this model, it's great that Arc Chirics have added it, and maybe it's something they'll come back to with a later model. Magazine release is a very slightly elongated version of the normal model. It's easy enough to use. The AK-12 has an insert in the magwell, which makes it much easier to rock and lock magazines. Unlike some models of AK, where you can over-insert the magazine and make it really hard to engage into the receiver. Both the magazines supplied fit really well with little wobble and engage very securely. 
The charging lever can be pulled back to reveal a conventional AK hop unit. The lever can be slid towards the muzzle for less hop and towards the stock for more hop. To release the top cover, you rotate this lever till it's upright, push it out one click. It can be quite stiff when you first get the rifle. Then you pull back on the top cover off its retaining hooks and you can rotate it upwards. There's plenty of room for stick type LiPo batteries and you can even slide them into the mock gas tube to give you even more room. Whilst the top cover is open, if we also fold the stock, that gives us access to the true quick change spring gearbox. And like a lot of other models, there's no need to remove the gearbox from the receiver or take the stop off or take the grip off just to change a spring. To access the spring, you could use a tool. However, Arcturus have cleverly provided a ready to go solution. Attached to the front sight block is this gas plug. If you depress the little plunger, you can rotate the gas plug out and you can then use this to remove the quick change spring cap. Once it's loosened, you can use, take it off with your fingers. That then gives you access to the spring guide itself. The gas plug can then be used to rotate the spring guide 90 degrees and you can remove the spring straight out the back of the gearbox. Reverse the process to reinstall all the parts. The spring guard itself is steel and has a bearing on it. Moving forward we find the plastic handguards. These are two-piece, top and bottom with rails at the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions. The two side rails are short but that should allow you to mount all the accessories that you might want. The combination gas block has a very conventional hooded AK front sight. It also has this rotating sling mount so you can sling from both left and right hand sides. The cool looking big muzzle brake can be removed by depressing this plunger on top and rotating 180 degrees. It comes straight off. Underneath you'll find a thread protector which can be removed easily. And underneath that is a very standard Airsoft 14mm counterclockwise thread. This means you can fit different muzzle brakes, silencers and tracer units to your heart's content. Replacing the muzzle brake is just as easy as taking it off. Great, so that's an overview of the Arcturus AK-12. Next thing we'll take it to the range and see how it performs. So here we are at Thurliston Air Gun and Archery Centre, ready to shoot the AK-12. For our course of fire today, I'm going to use these electronic attack sense targets that flash when they're hit. So you can see, and I can see, when the BBs strike the targets. I'm going to put them at 40, 45, 50, 55 and 60 metres. One of the things I really like about this gun is the trigger feel because it's got a micro switch in it rather than a conventional trolley and blade system. Um, there's a discernible break as the micro switch is depressed which feels a bit like a real one or a gas blowback trigger. Not quite as nice but certainly nicer than a normal AEG trigger. I've got BLS Precision 0.25 gram BBs in the AK-12. Just going to set the hop chrono and then go for effective range. Ooh, so first things first I'm going to shoot for the 40 meter target with a 0.25 gram BB. Okay, so it's pretty happy at 40 metres, five, six, seven times out of ten. Um, so we'll push out to 45. 
So 45 meters, 0.25 gram BLS precision BBs with the Arcturus AK-12. Again, it's pretty happy at 45 meters. Um, wind's pretty good today. I'll move on to 50. So I'm struggling to make single shot hits. What I'm gonna do is switch to automatic and just see what the maximum range is. Okay, so it looks like 55 meters is about the maximum range of the 0.25 gram BB. Next up, we use the BLS 0.28 gram BBs on the same course of fire. Okay, that's hop set on the 2.8 gram BBs. 40 meters should be no problems. Well, very happy with the two eights at 40 meters. So I'll move on to 45. So with the two eights, it's just about effective at 45. I'll push on to 50 and see how we get on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a hit at 55. So we know we can go at least that far. Okay, so we're going for maximum range with the 0.28s. See them falling short of the 60. So with the two eights, the AK-12 BBs are falling in between the 55 and the 60 metre target. So we'll call that 57, 58 metres. Maximum range and 45 effective range with the 028s. Another really nice thing about the AK-12 is that once you've done some firing, there's a little nub in next to the trigger. Push that, trips the anti-reversal latch, and decocks the gun. Super easy to hit at 40 meters. Seems to really like these BBs, so I'll push on to 45.
Seems effective at 45 meters, 50 meters now. Okay, once I've found the hold needed in the slight bit of crosswind down there, uh, pretty easily able to hit the 50 meter target. So we'll push on to 55. So I've made some hits at 55 meters, but I can't strike it consistently. So I'll just go for the maximum range now. Just finished firing the 0.3 gram BBs out of the AK-12. Really good performance out of those BBs. This gun really seems to like them. So maximum range was about 62, 63 meters, effective range 50 meters. So really good performance. So we tried 0.32 gram BBs out of the AK-12 and at UK power levels, bear in mind this one is doing about 320 FPS on a 0.2 gram BB. They're just not as good as the threes. So for this gun at UK power levels, I'd recommend you use 0.28 probably, preferably, 0.3 gram BBs. So we found out the BB the AK-12 likes the most is the 0.3 gram precision BB from BLS. So we've put a target out 30 meters and we're gonna shoot a group size. So I'll do 30 shots and see how we get on. So there may well not be centered on the target, but we'll measure the group that we achieve. I'll use a consistent hold throughout, as long as I hit. So here we are, 30 meter target that we put up, firing at it with the AK-12 with BLS 0.3 gram BBs. We've got a 33 centimeter group left to right and about 16 centimeter group top to bottom. A little bit of gusty crosswinds, but I think that's a pretty fair result. And you'd easily be able to hit a person every single time at this range with the AK-12. This is a disassembly of the Arcturus AK-12 and gearbox inspection. I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna disassemble the gun. I'm just gonna take this completely off. As you can see, the Arcturus has got really good battery storage under the top cover and the mock gas tube. It's big enough to get your LiPo all the way down. You can just push forward all the way on this little release latch and it will come off and take the spring out. Charging handle comes all the way back. You can see it has got all the way back and it comes out there. I'm going to see if I can get the hop and gearbox out without having to take the front end of the gun off. So to get this little block out, I've used the end of an Allen key, hooked it and then got one finger on the back surface here and just rotate it out. Okay, it's nice to see this brass insert for the screw. We have two cross heads. Then I'm going to lift this plastic block out. It just comes out on my fingers. That allows me to move the hop unit clear of the nozzle, which means I should be able to get the gearbox out without having to disassemble the front of the gun. And a plastic block here. I don't think that needs to come out. And then we need to get to the selector lever. It's just a little rubber plug. So that'll spin off nicely. So this is really interesting. Arcturus have put this little spring arm in here to add some tension to the detents on the receiver when you change fire selector position, which is really nice to see. 
I need to take the motor grip off. Gently wiggle it side to side. There you go. Pull the hot unit forward. Right, that's excellent. So I can get the gearbox out. So the gearbox is reinforced and radiused each of the four corners of the cylinder. Got bushings on the sector and spur gears and a bearing on the bevel. This is your anti-reversal latch trip. It's a really nice feature actually. If you get lock up, this protrudes out of the bottom of the receiver. You can push up and that disengages the anti-reversal latch and the gun can unwind without having to do anything or go into it or put it in full auto or anything. You can just tap that. Really nice feature. So you can use the gas plug to take off the cap. Gives you access to the spring guide. Push in, rotate, and spring and spring guide out the back. go don't lose this little bushing get the shims back on before we lose them all quite a clean molding looks pretty good and this is the micro switch for the trigger oh, and the, quite nice you can take the wiring loom off so this is the micro switch if anyone's interested kind of very standard two-part AK trigger okay let's have a look at the compression parts a bit of lube so the nozzle has an o-ring so the piston has a full metal rack with one of the teeth removed at the factory a nice big pickup block well lubed lube in the piston rails lighter lube on the o-ring so they've used a couple of different lube methods aluminium ported piston head quite a nice piston and cylinder really very good compression good compression with the nozzle on as well that's impressive plastic cylinder head so the air compression parts seem good gears seem to well lubed so it takes a pretty standard anti-reversal latch steel gears for a mim finished with bit of CNC. Okay, so shall we look at the shimming? So we'll just put a couple of screws in, check the shimming. Shimming seems pretty good for a stock gun. They're normally either too tight or way too loose. This is just about right. As I'm going to carry on testing it, I'm going to leave it at the stock shimming on. So that's the inside of the Arcturus gearbox. Compression's good, shimming's good. Some nice components. Quite happy with that. I hope you enjoyed this overview and range test of the Arcturus AK12 courtesy of Taiwan Gun. We think it's a solid performer and great for anyone that's interested in doing a modern Russian military loadout or would like a tactical looking AK variant. If you want to see more from me then head over to Anvil Airsoft TV on YouTube and you'll find over a hundred videos to watch on a huge range of subjects. Thanks again to Taiwan Gun for making this review possible. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.